Okay, so I'm here hanging out with Marty Schwartz. It's always nice to hang out with you, Rhett. The one and only. Yeah, man. Okay, so we just got done shooting uh, a couple videos for your channel. Thank you, by the way. Link down below. <laughs> if you don't know Marty's channel, everything is linked. I mean, he's kind of the original. You're like the OG. The gray is wisdom, folks. I've got some too. <laughs> I'm gaining it. You're, you're, you got some time. Well, yeah, so. we're getting there. So we, we, we were shooting some stuff for, for your channel and we were we got on the Hendrix train and I thought it would be cool for <laughs> us to kind of dig into that because my the reason I picked up guitar was hearing Red House for the first nice. time. Nice. Can't uh, go wrong with that. Yeah, I had like the Sony Walkman CD player in the back of my parents' car. And I remember exactly where I was when it came up. And uh, yeah, got a guitar like six months later. What what uh, What's one of your first... Uh, well, I love, you know, I've, I've studied Hendrix as an early guitar player and then as a later guitar teacher now. And there's, I, I think there's just one technique that I'd like to point out. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, and you can use it two different ways. Okay. So if you play me a C major chord and just let it ring out. Just like that. And so what I'm seeing is the E root, mm -hmm. which is usually a good starting point yep. to learn your notes. Right. And so I visualize that, and then I just cover it on the high E and B. And, and this is all over Hendrix, Hendrix's songs, yep. but it's, he's moving this little device around in the solo to uh, Wind Cries Mary. Yeah. Right. You know, he does it in two positions, but he does it in even three or four positions, right. but it's always this. You know, this the little susses are in there and the right. six. Right. The six and the two within the major chord. But so I just cover that. You can even just visualize the bar chord. And I just cover the top, but I only hammer on the B string a whole step up. And that right there is its own lick over that chord. But then I switch my middle finger to that fifth on the B string right there. Mm -hmm. And my index finger is on what's called the two there, which is would be for C, it would be on the seventh fret G. And what you get there is you get this thing where you can hammer up to the major third, which I'm hammering to that ninth fret G. So altogether, yeah, if you have a C major chord, anytime as a substitution, right? like you can think C major and instead of playing, you can play or any, or variations of it. Right. Play, play it again if you don't mind. I could start with the lower part. Or I could do. Okay, this is interesting because I think you and I visualize this very differently. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we're in C major. Uh-huh. Are you thinking like A minor pentatonic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Where I would go after that is that was C major. But if you play an A minor chord, you can use it in that form as well. Would yeah, you just you can play use F? That. Yeah. Play E minor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm using that G major there mm -hmm. to play E minor. Right. So any progression, like, I mean, you just played a few progressions, but like, I like, uh, since we're talking about Hendrix, like the chords of Hey Joe, it's mm -hmm. also the circle of fifths, C, G, D, A, and E, and that one device, C, G, D, A, one device, you know? Yeah. For, for, one device to rule them all. That is something I wish I had learned earlier. It, it took me a while to figure that out as I was like learning solos, like Hendrix stuff specifically. I didn't, I couldn't understand like what was happening there. It's, yeah. And it's very simple. It's all, you know, just well, triads. I, I promise you, I heard Little Wing and thought that only magicians could do that. <laughs> yeah. I think I was even 18 or 19 uh, listening to the SRV Little Wing. Right going that is you know and it is magical but there's devices that normal humans can learn right. and, and get there release the look up to rock gods you know 
uh, and they were untouchable, and now we're in this new it's like, age. Oh man, it's just triads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just ask Tomo. No, um, yeah, I love Tomo. Okay, right. so like on the Little Wing thing, though. Yeah. On two less Pauls. It's yeah, nice. yeah, it is. Uh, it's really very, cool. Very on brand. He did play Gibsons though. He did. I mean, yeah. yeah, there was the the SG and everything. But Fine V SG. Yeah, this chord is one of my favorite things. And I've started using. You this letting more. the open G ring out with it too? Uh, I'm not in this. I'm yeah, not. Yeah. But you keep. It's uh, adding that ninth. Yeah. Of the, you know, you're doubling the ninth there, but like. That it to me, especially when you've got some gain coming through, and you don't want to just play a power chord. Like this is a really great device to sort of gussy up your sound, create a bigger sound. It almost sounds like two guitars. Yeah, yeah. You know? And did he not just take that and move it in the minor pentatonic? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, it, that's the thing. It's It was like, the, that creative mind. Right. And Van Halen, you know, is like that. Yeah, but it's like these guys, it's it's easy to look at it now and think like, oh yeah, that's just like there's a power chord with a ninth on it, basically. Like, it's really simple, but at, to be the guy that came up with that, yeah. you just love that. Super simple, sounds huge, sounds bigger than it is, works really well with a ton of distortion, which I think is part of his thought process at the time because he was using fuzz faces and Marshall stacks, although the Marshalls he was using most of the time were clean. Mm -hmm. They wanted just more volume with a clean sound, you know? You know what you gotta appreciate? I'm just, I'm getting a visual in my mind's eye. You gotta love those those old concert videos where they have like six microphones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're like <laughs> singing into all these like, uh, you know, daisy chained PAs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I love, I love uh, pictures of um, and Chris, put one in here, but there's a, it's actually a, a picture of Hendrix playing, I don't know what festival it is, where they've got like a, a dynamic mic with just yellow foam <laughs> rubber banded around yeah. the front of the mic and stuck under the cab, you know? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it is very cool. Yeah. You, yeah. Got, a, you got one more, uh, one Hendrix device? Yeah, actually, I'll take what I think will be cool since there's a lot you can get out of that device. I'm going to just take the same device. Okay. And I'm just going to go through with just the one device and play the Little Wing chords. Okay. So I'm not gonna play Little Wing. Right. The chords to Little Wing. Yes, yeah, so we're not gonna get copy, no copyright strikes. <laughs> so. um, but so, E minor, I would play it right here. Uh, well, I'll do it up here. And then G is the relative major, so I'm gonna play it for G too. And then for A minor, back to E minor. B minor, and then C major, right? G major, F major, I'll go up here. C major, D major. One device. Um, so think if there's four different devices and you just know your root, that was just the E root, but yeah. if you knew one for where the A root is and, and the D, then you can actually really start to do that Hendrix thing. He's using what I just did on Little Wing, but he's just not using one device. He's using, right. you know, like the four in the different positions. Right. This device in particular is just the pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. So he's doing lots of chord stuff that's just chords of the pentatonic scale. So right. if you look here, is the only notes he's using for it. Yeah. And it sounds great. Yeah, pentatonic. Who knew? Who'd have thought, man? <laughs> Not me. You know, you should teach that. Pentatonic. Just thinking about scale. it. Yeah. The, the, the secret, let's get our thumbnail, the secret <laughs> forbidden scale. Yeah. You know, there's also this thing that happens, I, I've been noticing it this week and last week, where like outside of houses and studios, people are like playing on stage with drummers, bass players. It's wild. We're, like yeah. as a, it's, it's called like... live music. Okay. 
for it's like a, they're like playing together. Yeah, live streamed people or live. like live stream or just no, they're physically in the room. Okay, it's wild. I know. And they're doing this. Well, it's kind of like vinyl. It's like a new trend. Oh, you know? right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or is, they used to do it. Now it's coming back kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. Yeah, man. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Rhett. This is your video. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Marty Schwartz. Yes. Everything's linked down below. Do you have anything you want to... Not at all, man. I just want to say, keep having fun with the guitar. However, however it means, whatever it means to you, you know, not, not everyone has to go become a pro. Just keep playing it because you love it. That's great advice. Man. That's what I did. Yeah. I still do. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. My pleasure.